Hi, I'm Juliet Richards and today I'm going to be explaining to you the link between meat and type 2 diabetes. So a number of major long-term studies have shown that people who have the highest intake of meat products, so that is meat, fish, eggs and dairy, have the highest risk of type 2 diabetes while those with the lowest intake of meat products or those who don't eat meat products have the lowest risk of type 2 diabetes. So there are a number of possible explanations for this and this is what I will be going through now. So if we start on the left hand side, so saturated fat. Saturated fat, which again comes from animal products, um, all your meat, fish, dairy and eggs. So saturated fat will readily get into your cells and it can block glucose out, contributing to insulin resistance. So people who have or eat to the highest levels of animal products have the highest levels of what we call intramyocellular lipids which again is just a technical name for fat in your cells. And this contributes significantly to insulin resistance. Saturated fat has been found to be more metabolically harmful than polyunsaturated fats, monounsaturated fats, and even simple sugars because of this tendency to get into the cells and block glucose out. And they do this in the liver as well, contributing to insulin resistance in the liver. So next are advanced glycated end products. So advanced glycated end products are basically the result of a chemical reaction when you cook animal proteins, particularly at high and dry heat. So these advanced glycated end products can trigger oxidative stress and inflammation in the body, which can then lead on to insulin resistance and type two diabetes. So these advanced glycated end products have also been associated with the complications of diabetes. So they increase the risk of complications of diabetes as well as aging and just other age related diseases. Nitrites. So nitrites are commonly used in meat, particularly processed meats as a preservative. And these nitrites are converted to nitrosamine and nitrosamine will trigger free radicals in the body, which again will lead to oxidative stress, inflammation, and over time this can lead to insulin resistance and type 2 diabetes. Now I keep talking about inflammation and oxidative stress and I encourage you to go and watch my other video so you get a bit more of an understanding um, about you know, what I'm actually talking about. So the next one is heme iron. So heme iron is a type of iron we get, again, from animal products. Whereas non-heme iron is a type of iron we get from plant-based sources, like your dark green leafy vegetables, for example. So heme iron is a pro-oxidant. So it will trigger free radicals in the body, which can lead to oxidative stress and inflammation. Um, heme iron will also, it can also, interfere with the storage of glucose in your cells, contributing to insulin resistance in that way. And it can also promote the liver to release glucose or sugar into the blood, even if it's not necessary. So it would actually encourage um, high blood sugar levels. Heme iron can also directly damage the beta cells in the pancreas, which can also uh, contribute or lead to type 2 diabetes over time. The next one is animal protein. So people with the highest intake of animal protein or a high intake of animal protein can reduce your insulin sensitivity by as much as 25%. And when you replace these meat the meat products with plant-based proteins like soy protein, you significantly improve insulin sensitivity. And really there can be two things going on here because you're removing the meat, which may potentially be contributing to insulin resistance, but you're also adding in things um, that can improve insulin sensitivity. So isoflavones are a 
phytonutrient. A phytonutrient is basically a plant nutrient. And this is thought to be uh, what contributes or what really plays a role in improving insulin sensitivity. And there are many other types of phytonutrients in different plant-based um, proteins and plant sources that can really help. Uh, they're very health promoting and they encourage, reduce inflammation and encourage um, the insulin to, to work properly in the body. Then last is environmental chemicals. So these are industrial chemicals that get into meat. And these chemicals are also referred to as endocrine disruptors. That is because they can disrupt our endocrine system. And our endocrine system is the system of hormones in our body. And remember, insulin is a hormone. So these chemicals can disrupt our hormones, including insulin, which can then lead to insulin resistance and type 2 diabetes. And it's found that meat eaters have the highest levels of these industrial chemicals. Now, another thing that doesn't necessarily increase the risk of type 2 diabetes, but it does increase the risk of cardiovascular disease, is a thing called TMAO, or trimethylene oxide. So this is a byproduct of two amino acids. So amino acids are the building blocks of proteins. So Choline and L-carnitine are amino acids of animal proteins. So when you eat meat and other animal products, these amino acids, choline and L-carnitine, are digested by the bacteria or the microbes in your gut, and they produce TMA. And TMA then goes to your liver, and your liver will metabolize it into TMAO. And TMAO is now considered a marker of cardiovascular disease because people with high levels of TMAO have almost double the risk of cardiovascular disease. So why am I telling you this? Well, people with type 2 diabetes are at much greater risk of cardiovascular disease. So we really need to be taking this into account. So 70% of all deaths from cardiovascular disease are actually in people with type 2 diabetes. And people with type 2 diabetes don't die of type 2 diabetes generally. About 70% again will actually die from cardiovascular disease. So this is something we want to really make sure that we are um, keeping on top of and preventing from happening. So if you are replacing or reducing your meat consumption, what you replace it with is just as important. Because if you replace meat with things like you know, highly refined or processed grains, basically anything made from flour or sugar or other processed oils or just processed food in general, then you're really no better off. Whereas if you swap meat with other plant-based sources and whole foods, then you're not just removing the meat, which may be potentially contributing to insulin resistance, you're also adding in all these really health-promoting nutrients that will help to improve insulin sensitivity. So really, it's a double whammy. You get um, both effects that lead to a beneficial effects, effect. So, you know, maybe this is, this means for you just starting with a meat-free Monday. So instead of having meat on Mondays, instead you swap it out with plant-based proteins like soy or tofu um, or other legumes. I hope you have found this useful. If you have, uh, make sure you subscribe to my YouTube channel so you don't miss other upcoming videos. And please share it with your friends and families and make sure you like it so, so I know. If there's anything else you would like me to um, discuss, then make sure you put that in the comments section as well.